Welcome Head Starters. I'm so excited today. Don't ask me how it happened, but one of my good friends who I went to high school with, we started playing squash recently, and his cousin is sitting next to me. What are the chances? <laughs> so hi, Kiara. Hi. So for those of you who don't know, I am speaking to Kiara Nurgan, the winner of the 2016 Google Science Fair. She also won the Google Science Fair Community Impact Award for Sub-Saharan Africa and the Middle East. She's been featured on Forbes, CNN. She was recognized as the eighth most influential team in the world by Times Magazine. I am so excited. So Kiara, how's things going? It's going well. Okay, so Kiara, I gave, I gave the Head Starters a teaser trailer about you. Tell us more about your journey before you became here. Well, I'm 16 years old currently. I'm from Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, I'm currently in grade 11. I'll be in grade 12 next year. And I entered the Google Science Fair um, this around September. And I uh, got a call back as being one of the 16 global finalists. And I went to San Francisco in September. And there I was announced as one of the winners. And that's when it all happened. Sure. So could you tell the audience what was your idea? So my idea is a low-cost, biodegradable, super-absorbent polymer made out of orange peels and avocado skins. And, and how did that idea come about? Well, I looked at the problem South Africa was facing at the time, and obviously one of them was the drought. And I started looking at what I could do to lessen the impact that the drought had on South Africa's food supply. That's quite a small problem, right? <laughs> so how, how is your idea different from what's currently in the market? So they are super absorbent polymers currently, but they're very expensive and they're not biodegradable. So it means that it couldn't really be applied to farms across South Africa or across the world. So I basically try to keep the absorbing qualities, but without the negative impacts. So everything's like positive. Yeah. <laughs> And how, how did you become interested in this field of science? Well, I always had a questioning nature, a curiosity, and from there I always looked at things and what I could do with my knowledge to solve problems. Because I interviewed uh, my friend Cornell uh, last week, and he also said it's his curiosity that's made him successful. Yeah. There's something about being curious that makes you successful. So, so could you tell us more, what is the Google Science Fair? So the Google Science Fair is a science fair for teenagers from 13 to 18. Uh, it's all online, so you, um, any, play, any teenager across the world can enter it. You basically create your own website. There's all steps on the Google Science Fair website. And you create your own thing with, you have to show your method, your test, your results, your research, health and safety, and then you submit it. Um, I think this every year it's around April or so and then they get back to you if you made it around um, just before September and stuff. And it's a global thing so... Yeah, so it's all online so anyone across the world can do it if you're from 13 to 18. Wow. So, so could you explain to me some of the highlights like once you're at the fair? Well, I, at the fair I met the Google CEO oh. uh, Sundar Pichai mm -hmm. He he's very down to earth. He's very. It was a great experience meeting him, um, and just being on the Google campus was really amazing. Okay, wait. We need to go back to the Google CEO because he's one of my friends. <laughs> so I'm gonna be a bit selfish with my question. <laughs> so how did you meet him? So at uh, the Google campus, one day we had um, like a fair with all our stores, all the 16 global finders, and they. Um, invited schools from across the area for the children to come and meet us and there then uh, the CEO and his assistant stood in line and they also came to meet some of the finalists. And, and what did you talk about? He just asked me about my project, what it is, what it does, how is it different from things already available. Uh, do you have his email? Um, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but do you? Um, I have... <laughs> I have somebody from Google that exchanges emails. Oh, lovely. 
Awesome. So, so what are the opportunities that have opened up for you after winning the competition? So I've got a lot of well, um, newspapers, magazines, radio, those that will read a lot. And obviously um, I'm looking at companies to get my product in commercial, the commercial market. Nice. Maybe I'll help you out. <laughs> so, so you seem to be having everything going for you. But what was like your biggest challenge during this process and how did you overcome it? Um, I think just the fact that it was so time consuming the entire project and I didn't have a lot of time because with school and extramural activities, I think just the fact that it took so long to do. How, how long did it take you there? Well, it's difficult to put a time, a specific time on it because I've always been um, thinking about it, doing tests at home, and submitting things, putting it into methods, results. So it was quite, I can't put it in exact time, but it was just quite long. Sure. And, and what would you consider to be your biggest failure? And what did you learn from that experience? I think uh, through the project, one of the biggest failures were just the fact that I had to have so many control variables that it, especially when you're experimenting at home, you don't actually they take into account that you have to keep the light constant, humidity constant, all the little things in the project that really affect the results.